what is dispensationalism? That's the topic of this lesson, and hopefully you will be blessed by what I'm about to share with you. Look, I know out there on the uh, world of YouTube, there's so much going on when it comes to trying to explain what dispensational is. Uh, much of it, I think, is confusing. It's misleading. And I think it comes from both sides, from those who are dispensationalists and those who claim not to be dispensationalists. So in this short video, I hope I'm going to be able to explain to you what dispensational is and illustrate it in a very simple and non-confusing way. Now, I'm just going to look at two dispensations. That's it. Okay, I'm not going to look at seven, eight, or nine, or however many dispensations you think there are. Uh, but ultimately, I think at the end, I don't think that you're going to disagree primarily with what I'm teaching. Uh, it might bother you, okay, uh, or for many of you, you might be pleased by what you're about to learn. But my whole goal is just to simplify things because I realize that in dispensationalism, we've overcomplicated so much. I I'm holding in my hand here one of the most famous books on dispensationalism, uh, Dispensational Truth by, Cal by Clarence Larkin, excuse me. And uh, usually when people think of dispensationalism, uh, they think of like these very confusing and complex charts. This chart right here has been used over and over by so many different authors and Bible teachers. And so usually when people see this chart, they're like, I've seen that chart before. Well, Clarence Larkin is the originator of that type of chart. So with all that said, uh, I am going to also be illustrating kind of in a chart form what dispensational is. And the reason why dispensationists are so uh, attracted to charts is because they're, they're such great tools for teaching. I mean, this isn't anything... Uh, um, mind-blowing to know about. I mean, when you look at other fields of study, uh, generally they graph it, they chart it, uh, they explain it out in such a way that it's visually pleasing and acceptable and, and, and understandable. So dispensationism is no different in so many ways. I liken dispensationism to biblical engineering. And ultimately, it comes down to this. The Bible is a book filled with facts, and it's a complex book. It's a book that was designed and written and uh, given by God Almighty, who is the ultimate uh, designer and architect of the universe. So we could definitely take his book and essentially, you know, chart it out or map it out and illustrate it in, in a very um, uh, beautiful way. The problem is, though, is that what we've done is we, we've complicated things. And usually when people see these charts, and I've been looking at these charts since I was a teenager, I'm 42 years old now, so it's been a long time, I could see why people get confused. But when we look at these charts, we usually don't see how they start off. And so like when you see what's behind me, you're like, okay, I can kind of get that. But just imagine me putting another seven bubbles out there. I mean, that would probably confuse a lot of you out there. So I hope that if you are not inclined to dispensationalism, if you happen to think dispensationalism is nothing but pure man-made heresy, stay with me. This video is going to be short. I'm going to do my absolute very best just to at least explain to you what dispensational is. If you're a Roman Catholic, if you're a, uh, a Greek Orthodox, if you're a Reformed person, uh, or if you're a Jehovah's Witness, whoever you are, if you're an atheist, just bear with me because I really think there's nothing out there like this one I'm about to explain to you uh, on, on, on the world, uh, in the world of YouTube, excuse me. So let's do this. I'm going to simply start off by defining the word dispensation. Now the word dispensation comes from the word dispense right here, as you can see, and it simply means to give out, to hand out. It's that simple. And the greatest synonym, I think, for the word dispensation, the most powerful, the most easiest one to understand is the word administration. And the word administration comes from the word to administer, which would mean to dispense, to give out, to deliver out. So here's something I want you to really think about real quick. When you think of the word dispensation, you don't usually think of the you don't usually think of administration. You don't. I mean, I do, but most people don't think of the word administration as a synonym. Uh, they usually think of the word dispensation as uh, only having to do with some like religious context. Like that's it. But most people aren't aware that the word dispensation is still used in a legal and political context. Okay, still used in an economic context. I mean, go check it out yourself. Just type in the word dispensation, hit news, and you're going to see how it's used and, and, and the way I just described it, it, it is used. So the word administration 
to me, is not really used in a religious sense, okay? I understand that some of the new translations may substitute the word administration for the word dispensation, but ultimately, uh, as a whole, most people don't usually think as the word uh, in a religious way, okay? But regardless of how you think of it, the word dispensation and the word administration are synonymous, okay? So usually when I'm trying to explain dispensation, what I want people to think of is, think of it as like uh, the presidents, okay, and their administrations, Simply, uh, every president has their own administration. They have their own program, okay, on how they're going to run their specific government. So now let's just take a step back. The word dispensation, when we look at it from a dispensationalist view, is simply this. It's a way to look at how God uh, delivers out, hands out his divine program for a specific people, okay, for a specific people. This program is focused on how that group of people should live their life and also establishes a way for them to eventually attain eternal life by entering the world to come. Whew, that's a lot. I, I get it. But that's ultimately what uh, dispensationalism is when you look at it from its re- from its religious context or at least from the dispensational context. Okay? So when we are talking about like uh, the dispensation I'm about to review behind me, just simply remember that it's a divine plan program given out, dispensed, administered by God. Okay? That's it. That's all. And so now let's take a look at what I have behind me. What I have simply behind me is two dispensations. This is the most basic classical way of explaining it. I actually kind of disagree with what I'm about to share with you. But for the sake of just trying to explain dispensationalism in its most simplest way, I think this is a very easy and and all we all can agree on way. And also, this possible, it's very possible that you may say, well, I'm a dispensationalist too. And I would probably say, yeah. And, and I'll explain to you why in just a second. So let's just take a look at what I would call the, the first dispensation I want to discuss. This dispensation started off with Moses because Moses was the one that God dispensed his law to on Mount Sinai, whom they, dis- whom they both dispensed to the nation of Israel. Okay, or we'll just say God dispensed to the nation of Israel. He administered a new divine plan, the law, what we call the law of Moses, or the law handed down to Moses on Mount Sinai. And God specifically gave it to the nation of Israel. Those outside the nation could enter in, but they didn't have to. So remember, the law of Moses, as I call it and the Bible calls it, was specifically for the nation of Israel. So if you were to really focus on this time period from Moses to Jesus, the the primary group of people that are in focus is the nation of Israel. So when you take pretty much from Genesis 15 all the way up to even to the to the last chapter in John, the primary group that's in focus is none other than the nation of Israel, okay? The nation of Israel because the, the nation of Israel is who the law of Moses is for. It's the nation of Israel who was under the law of Moses. Now, the nation of Israel, their religion was called Judaism. So to keep things very simple, what I tell people is this, that from Moses to Jesus, Judaism or the Jews' religion was the primary program was or was the program that we would call the J- Judaism program, the, 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 the program of Judaism, which was given, distributed to the nation of Israel to keep. Like that's it. That's all. So I'm looking at it like this. I break it down. So, okay, there was a period where Judaism was the main religion of the nation of Israel, of all the people. Then we get to Jesus. And by the way, a little side note, B.C. and A.D. are actually in many ways dispensational because B.C. and A.D. from Jesus right here from his birth, we are dividing the history of mankind based upon Jesus Christ and they're recognizing a change in a program. So that's the rabbit trail. I'm not going to go into it, but I mean, it's important to understand even BC and AD are in some ways dispensational. That is, they're pointing out a change in a program. So uh, Jesus comes along. God manifests in the flesh, dies on the cross, buried, resurrected for our sins. That right there is the foundation of the religion of Christianity. So we believe as Christians that we no longer have to offer sacrifices. And when I say we, I'm talking about, I'm just being generic in that because I just said that the law of Moses is only for Israel. But let's just suppose we're an Israelite. Let's say we're an Israelite on the other side of Jesus. We're now on the AD side, okay? 
what's happening now is there's no longer a need for temple sacrifices. Okay, there's no longer a need to have to circumcise or keep the law of Moses to gain eternal life. That's Leviticus 18.5, by the way. That's another video. Now, from here, they recognize that they're in a new religion called Christianity. I know people in Judaism are going to disagree. They're going to be like, no, we don't accept him. He's not a Messiah. I get it. I get it. I'm just trying to explain to you dispensation in a very simple and brief way. So when we see this, when we accept, if you accept this, if you out there who are not dispensationalists, if you accept that prior to Jesus, the religion of the Israelites that was given by God to, to obey and to follow was the religion of Judaism, well, then you believe in one dispensation. You believe in a program, a disp- an administration, a divine program that was given by God, dispensed by God at none other than Mount Sinai and given to Moses. Okay? So uh, you might hear the dispensation of, of the law or the dispensation, uh, or usually it's the dispensation of law uh, here. But I would prefer to say Judaism because I think that's the name of the divine program, Judaism. That's the name of the religion. So when we move on to the other side of the cross, when we as Christians say, no, there is no need to go to the temple anymore and offer sacrifices. I don't have to, I don't have to uh, um, obey the Sabbath. I mean, I'm not going to get stoned if if I don't keep the Sabbath. Uh, On this side of the cross, if you were an Israelite, you would. On this side of the cross, you wouldn't. Why? Because as a Christian, we believe after the cross that a new divine program was administered or dispensed by none other than God Almighty. And that through this new uh, dispensation, this new administration, this new divine program, which we call Christianity, we gain eternal life simply by faith alone. Not by following works of the law. Now, again, if I'm an Israelite and I'm under this program, I'm going to see it really, really clearly. One of the biggest troubles I think we have today is within Christianity is when we look at Scripture, we fail to recognize who is the primary group of people in focus. Israel and their Messiah. And their Messiah, when Jesus came, remember, if you look at Matthew chapter 1, he specifically says he came for his people. His people were the Israelites, the 12 tribes, okay? The 12 tribes, the house of Israel, and the uh, the house of Jacob. Sorry. Yes. No, no. Uh, house of Judah and house of Jacob. Excuse me. Anyways, I don't want to get into that. But here's the gist of it all, ladies and gentlemen. If you believe that before the cross, the religion for the Israelites to follow was Judaism, because Ju- Judaism means it means Jews' religion, okay? So if that word irks you, one, you need to get right. You need to fix, your, you need to fix something in your head. There's nothing wrong with Judaism. To many of you out there, it's a four-letter word, and it shouldn't be. It should not be. And I say that in as gracious as David can say it. <laughs> but anyways, and if you believe that after the cross, there's no longer a need for temple sacrifices, there's no longer a need, no longer a need to keep the Sabbath, and some of you, I realize, do that, like Seventh-day Adventist and, and others, uh, but still, you won't uh, you won't go to a temple to get your sins forgiven, or you won't offer sacrifices when before they did. But here's the deal: after Jesus, if you believe that we are there, there's no longer a need for temple sacrifices, then you are agreeing with the program called Christianity. So, two dispensations, two divine programs, two administrations that clearly I think we both can agree on. And these are the dispensations I really think that we should focus on as dispensationalists. Drawing up little circles and seven and eight here and there, it gets really, really confusing. And by the way, like I said, I actually kind of, I actually disagree with my own chart they have, but I'm being very simple in explaining this. And then I will make another video in what will be called, what is hyperdispensationalism? But for now, just so that we can all at least say, can we agree? Can we be on the same same side at least? Can we both agree at least that on this side of the cross, it functioned like this, and on this side of the cross, it functioned like this? On this side of the cross was one administration. On this side of the cross, it was another administration or dispensation or dispensation. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what dispensational is. Thank you very much. Peace out.